when we all start rock hounding, of course, one of the main features that attracts us to rocks is color. You've probably asked yourself the question, how do these minerals and gems get their color? Well, today I'm going to try to answer that. Uh, before uh, I go any further, I always like to, when I do these informational videos, I like to give a little bit of credentials on myself, just so you don't think I'm just, you know, regurgitating internet stuff. So I do have a geology degree. Again, I'm not an expert in this field, but as part of my master's degree that I did in university, I did take some mineralogy courses and they were always some of my favorite courses to take. When I was rock hunting as a young child, it kind of got me into geology and mineralogy. So that's why I took an interest to the subject. I'm not an expert in it. I have some education, but again, I'm not an expert in the field. So today I'm going to keep it Try to keep it to layman's terms, to just to be general, to give the information. Um, but it's interesting stuff, so let's dive in. So when you're talking about how gems get their color, you can divide the gems and minerals into three separate categories to kind of explain it. So the first category we're going to dump some minerals into is a category called idiochromatic. These are also referred to as self-coloring minerals. An idiochromatic mineral, the chemical makeup of the mineral determines the color of the gem or the mineral that you're looking at. So for example, malachite. Malachite has a chemical formula of Cu2CO3. So it's a copper carbonate. As you can see, it has copper, in its chemical formula. And here's an example of malachite. You can see it's got a nice green color to it. This side's polished, this side's polished as well, but not as well. But you can see different shades of green. That green color comes from the copper content. We call this element a chromophore. It's the coloring agent for the mineral. Malachite was also one of the first ever copper ores. Uh, when it was first discovered, people actually used it to process the copper out of and use, you know, use it to mine copper. Not so much today. Uh, the next mineral I'm going to show you, though, is this is chalcopyrite. Now, chalcopyrite's formula is CuFeS2. It is a copper iron sulfide. Now, it has two coloring agents in this. The iron and the copper combine to give it a metallic luster. Most sulfide minerals, when bonded with other metals, look like metal. It's just the way it is. And they're common mining ores. So this is a mining ore for copper. And you can see it's got the, you kind of got like kind of different shades of, you get that azurite kind of look, like, you know, you get the different shades of, metallic luster in there. That's due to the copper. What lightens the mineral more away from the copper look, you see some some copper color there. But the gold color, like that's due to the iron content as well. So there's two chromophores in chalcopyrite. So chalcopyrite is the main copper ore. It's the, it's the most common copper ore in the world. And that's an example of it right there. Another example of an idiochromatic mineral would be turquoise. And it is another copper mineral. So its chemical formula is CuAl6PO4. So it's a copper aluminum phosphate. I don't actually have an example of turquoise with me right now, but everybody knows the color of turquoise. It's got that, you know, bluish, greenish color. That's from the copper. So again, the copper is acting as the chromophore in turquoise. Now, other chromophores in idiochromatic minerals are, for example, titanium and cobalt. Uh, those usually translate to blue color minerals. And we also have chromium, which usually translates to red or green. So that's our first category of minerals and how they get their color. Self-coloring, idiochromatic. The second 
category are called allochromatic minerals. These minerals get their color from impurities within the crystal lattice. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, one example of an allochromatic mineral, there's two really common examples that I'm going to show. The first is quartz. So let's just draw a little dummy sketch here of a typical crystal structure of quartz. So let's say we got some crystals here and they're lining up like so, you know, being formed in the, in the vein. Well, as the mineral quartz is being precipitated, and, this, and the chemical formula for quartz is SiO2, as the mineral is being precipitated, let's say in a quartz vein, depending on the temperature and pressure of precipitation, the environment at the time it's being precipitated out, you'll have other metals, transition metals, we call them, that just don't form a chemical bond with quartz. But they're there. And they're being precipitated out at the same conditions, environmental conditions at the time of precipitation. So they got to go somewhere. And a lot of times they get trapped within the crystal lattice in the spaces between the crystals. So like right here, right in there. So you'll have these transition elements floating around within the crystal lattice of quartz, and that will color the mineral. For example, here's one variation of quartz, citrine. Citrine is yellow. And that yellow color is due mostly to, you could probably guess, iron. And you're going to see a common theme here. Carnelian, which is orange. That orange variation of quartz. It gets its color from iron. In Nova Scotia, we actually do have a red variety of quartz. I've shown it on the channel before. That color comes from iron, but not just specifically iron, iron oxides. So, hematite or limonite. Those are examples of iron oxides. Sorry if you can't read my writing. The marker is a little thick. So you can see we've got a theme going on here. Iron's causing a lot of these colors, and we're going to explain why in a minute. Amethyst. It's one of our favorite quartz variations. Can you guess what causes amethyst to become purple? If you stuck with the theme, you'd be correct. It is iron. Iron is the cause for the purple color in amethyst. And you could be asking, well, why is iron causing amethyst to be purple? Well, it's not just the iron. It's iron that has been exposed to radiation. It will turn the iron purple, the, impure, the transition element iron purple in the, the lattice of quartz. That's why amethyst is purple. So at some point in quartz's life, if it's turned to amethyst, it was at one time exposed to a radioactive source, which could be other radioactive elements within the crust when it was forming. So uranium would be one, radium would be another, just all those radioactive minerals. Another common example is rose quartz. What causes rose quartz to be pink? Well, if we stick with the theme, we're going to be right. It is iron, but not just iron. There's other things that cause rose quartz to be pink in combination. One of those is titanium. And another one is manganese. Depending on the percentage of each within the quartz, determines the hue of the pink that you get. The most desirable would be the really translucent, deep pink color, usually caused by more titanium. Another allochromatic mineral, fluorite. Fluorite and quartz are both clear with no impurities. They're clear, translucent minerals. When you add impurities, you get color.
So for fluorite, um, you know, brown and black, which is rare, but that's caused by manganese, a yellow, orange and red, that's caused by, you guessed it, iron, blue, green, copper, purple fluorite, not the same as amethyst. It's, it's actually caused by a mineral called yttrium. And let's not go into that detail. Just know that there's a transition metal out there called yttrium, and that's what causes uh, fluorite to be purple. And here's my favorite, uh, rainbow. So what's happening with rainbow fluorite? Here's an example of rainbow fluorite. And what's happening is you see there's different colors. There's blue, there's purple, there's green, there's clear. So in the vein, so typically these ha occur in veins or pockets, uh, you'll have growth moving inward. And each layer that you see, the water that is precipitating these minerals out had more of the element causing the different colors. So the yttrium, the copper, uh, the iron, you know, they're just different chemical makeup of the waters that are precipitating the minerals out. So then it just forms the, the fluorite in layers. So that's, that's a cool thing about rainbow fluorite. It's my favorite type of fluorite. Here's uh, some purple and yellow fluorite. And here's some green. And I also have some uh, rose quartz here to show. It's a nice little piece I picked up from Highland Park. I'm going to use this one to make a faceted crystal, I think. Faceted gemstone. It's got that nice translucent pink to it. So lots of titanium in that one. Okay, so that's two types of coloring out of the way. Third type. The third type is called pseudochromatic. Can you guess how pseudochromatic minerals get their color? Answer in the comments right now before we go any further in the video, if you can guess it. Pseudochromatic minerals are caused by light interacting with the physical structure of the crystals within the mineral. What's the most common example of this? There's two really common in the gemstone industry anyway. Opal is one. I actually don't have an example of opal with me right now. Um, sadly, I wish I did. Uh, it's pretty expensive material. Um, but what I do have is the second type of pseudochromatic mineral, which would be Labradorite. So these are two commons. And I do have an example of Labradorite here. This is actually quite a high grade specimen of Labradorite. This came from Labrador, Newfoundland, where it gets its name from. And the light interaction that happens here is actually scattering. It light hits the crystal and scatters across the crystal face. So you get, uh, you know, this cool blue. Usually it's a blue green effect. The deep kind of turquoise blue is what you're looking for, like at the end here. That's the most desirable color. But uh, that's a nice color too when you get the, the lighter turquoise color. But this end up here has the, the darker blue. That's what, you, that's what people look for. But the, the phenomenon that you, know, that you get here, it's called labradorescence. And that's what causes the color for this mineral. Obviously, Labradorite, one of my favorite minerals. We live pretty close to the source. This was gifted to me by a colleague that was actually in Labrador. Collected a couple boulders of this stuff, which is very rare. This this was like 30, 40 years ago he did this. So, uh, yeah, you can't just go up there and do that anymore. Um, material's pretty scarce. But uh, he gifted this to me, and I always keep it and cherish it. It's a super high-grade piece. There is a good show of the blue there. You can see it. That's the color. The blue is what you want. So that does it for today's video, guys. I hope that was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. Um, tried to keep it very general. Again, I'm not an expert in this field, 
but I do have a little bit about uh, knowledge, probably more than the average person. Um, so glad to share that with you. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Any examples that you have that you want to show off, you can email me at uh, rockhoundandlife at gmail.com. I'd love to see your guys' uh, collections and your, your favorite minerals. And let me know in the comments what your favorite color is that uh, you like to look for in, in rocks and minerals. Everybody stay safe, and we'll see you next week.